so this meter is kind of a sad story um it used to live in the toolbox of one of the guys i used to work with what got laid off a couple of years ago i was looking for a meter to use just in the shop and i grabbed this one and sadly it didn't work what i found when i popped it open was that in the intervening years since buddy got laid off the batteries are still in there so i'm hoping that i can just clean this up and get it working again I mean, it's not much of a repair hopefully but i'm hoping that none of this electrolyte got down in the bottom there's quite a bit of it showing though on the back of these look at that that's nasty I tried scraping it off uh, already a little bit with a screwdriver, but that didn't work. So, I'll have to get a little bit more, I don't know, strong, creative, something on this thing. This meter, it's a good one. I mean, it's a Fluke 189. I don't see it in, in their current range, or at least not currently available on Amazon. But on eBay, they're going for about... 200 bucks American plus shipping so it's it's a decent meter decent enough meter it's got all the things I mean it's uh, and being a fluke it's going to be a relatively solid piece of gear if it hadn't got all this electrolyte all dumped into it which is kind of annoying get out Okay, so I'm gonna have to pop those fuses. I don't think so. What comes off here? The front or the back? Oh, perfect. Okay. So there's where the positive and negative power contacts the board. And I'm happy to see that there's no corrosion in there. Okay. Well, this should be fairly straightforward then. Just a matter of cleaning that up. Now then, the electrolyte that this is, or was, uh, in an alkaline battery is, according to Wikipedia, potassium hydroxide. Or at least that's what's going to be uh, um, leaked out of it. Uh, there's zinc and magnesium dioxide in there, and for the uh, two metals and potassium hydroxide as the um, as the electrolyte the liquid and potassium hydroxide according to Wikipedia is a relatively strong base so to neutralize it if there was any liquid kicking around uh, you'd use an acid a mild acid such as vinegar which I've got there, and uh, potassium hydroxide is also soluble in alcohol, which I have here. And I've got some cotton swabs, um, North American folk would call them Q-tips, uh, Europeans and people in other English-speaking countries that aren't North America, cotton buds or earbuds or something like that. So... I'll use that chemically and I'll also do some mechanical cleaning. I'm going to use this old Radio Shack sanding pen that I found. What it actually is, is a clump of fiberglass bristles in here. But if you only expose just a little bit, it makes for a fairly strong, uh, uh, fairly decent uh, abrasive. So the first thing I think I'm going to do actually no since it's since it's not liquid anymore i don't think i need to uh, neutralize it i probably just need to clean it oh those are popping up fairly easily that's nice so oh come on this isn't going to be a really heavy duty repair um but it is probably going to be a common type of repair that a lot of people have to do and i mean i've done this before on various pieces of equipment i've uh, managed to get some pretty decent freebies over the year just by doing this kind of a simple repair so 
first and it's going to pop all these metal bits out of their slots so I can get at them properly. So that's the uh, the negative that goes off to the main meter. Uh, can I get that out of there? Oh yeah, there we go. There's that. And how am I going to get the positive out? Same way. So I just pinch it down a little bit so that it fits through that slot there. And push it down. Okay, and again, pry that up out of there. Players, maybe? I don't know. This is going to be very situational, depending on what device you're working on. Certainly, every manufacturer and every little device is going to have a slightly different way of doing that. And how did that come out of there? So, like that. Okay. And actually, that positive one is fairly clean. I don't think I need to do much to it. It's these negative ones where all the crud is. Oh man, look at that. That's nasty. I think I'm going to just start with some dental picks. Um, these, most of these tools, especially the special, the odd specialized uncommon stuff, is stuff that I've picked up over the years for cheap as I happen to come across it. These dental picks, for instance, or from Princess Auto, which Americans can translate as Harbor Freight because they both carry a lot of the same stuff, especially in their surplus department. So I'm just going to mechanically remove as much of that as I can. Now then, let's see what happens if we put some vinegar on this. Obviously, I'm going to have to clean the, the acidity of the vinegar off later. But, oh, that's taking some of it out anyways. Yeah, the uh, Q-tip is coming up clean. I say Q-tip, these are actually just generic ones from a bargain store, but it's one of those things where the term has become sort of genericized, at least for most normal people. Okay, that's cleaned it up a little bit anyway. I think... And that stopped any of the cor any corrosion from happening further. But I think my next step is going to be alcohol, just because it evaporates clean. This is ninety nine percent methanol. Um, this is six point four percent ethanol. Just for reference. So yeah, that's. Um, but the 99% alcohol does evaporate clean and doesn't leave residue behind, which is nice. I could also use isopropyl. I just don't happen to have any. And this methanol is sold in the paint section of the hardware store as paint thinner or paint, uh, or for thinning other painting type stuff. It's also sold in the camping section as camp fuel. Um, the 70% alcohol uh, isopropyl is sold in drugstores and whatnot as rubbing alcohol, but that other 30% can contain oils or other things that can leave a residue. So I tend not to use it for cleaning unless I'm desperate. So that's better than what I started with. I am going to touch up this one just a little bit. That takes a lot of that off. Not the physical corrosion, but a lot of it. I'm going to see what's on here. You. Now then, for this little guy, I, mean, I could use a file um, like the ones I used on those, the Dremel battery connections. These little bent tip files are called riffware files. Um, they come in a variety of of shapes, um, and they're I primarily use those for modeling, but uh, they can get into all kinds of weird little places. But since I got these out, I don't have to get into weird little places. I can use my little fiberglass pen. So you just stick out just 
the smallest amount and start scrubbing away and it's fairly gentle but it uh, also doesn't uh, uh, doesn't mess around realistically I only really need the contact point the high spot there but I'm going to try and do a little bit more just just to make sure that I've got a uh, lots of good contact surface it doesn't take much out of this thing I don't know I mean so I got this at Radio Shack in Canada which hasn't existed for over 20 years I don't know where I'd get one now. Um, uh, the, the the file would probably grind through the plating on here, which is not ideal. Although the corrosive has done that anyway. So I'm thinking now that the contact point or the contact, which is just up on the top here, is in pretty rough shape, especially on this one. I'm gonna give it a little bit more dental pick action maybe a little bit more alcohol action just to clean away any of the stuff that I've loosened up a little bit more of the fiberglass cleaning pin action I think that's reasonable just knock all the dust off it with some alcohol I'm hoping that that's all I need to do to revive this meter because it really is a pretty decent meter Okay, let's put it all back together and see what happens. Oh, before I put that back together, I should probably clean that out. Just, just for cosmetic reasons more than anything. Oh, and I missed that contact too. Huh, why did I miss that? Okay, and those just snap right back in there. I don't think there's a... Oh yeah, there is. There is a bit of a trick. This side here has to go under that lip. That one doesn't. In here, that one has to go under the lip, and that one... Come on, get under there. And this one... So it looks like it's the positive sides of all of these that have to go under the lip. Again, your mileage may vary depending on what you're fixing up the battery uh, disaster from. So now then, this one was the positive one. Which came out of there. Right? Click into place, nice satisfying click. And this one would have been the negative one. Click into place, push you down to where you're supposed to be. If I had some contact enhancer, I would put it on there, but I don't, so I'm not going to. We'll just put this guy back together and see what happens. Ha ha! There we go. We turn on. Nice. It's a little bit scuffed up from living in a uh, working technician's toolbox, but that'll do nicely. So now that this guy's back together, probably should just take a look and check its accuracy. I'll check it against this big brother here. This is the one that lives in my uh, truck most of the time. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, so I've got them both connected up using these Wagos in parallel to my little 5 volt bench supply here. 4.99 volts. These guys, 
5.0216. That's close enough for anything I'm likely to do. I have no reason to doubt this one. It's just been sitting in a toolbox, cooling its heels for, God, four or five years since Buddy got laid off. But now I can at least put it back to use in the shop, just as a bench meter in the shop. So that's good. Um, well, thanks for watching. This is just a simple, basic repair. It's something that everybody's going to have to do at one point or another in their life. So I figured I'd uh, show a couple of different ways of doing it. Thanks again. Talk to you later.